Hi everyone and welcome back. It's been a while since I've been on but life has just kind of got in the way lately. Today I'm going to talk about modular layout design and in specifically I'm going to talk about Envir's design and how our modules work. We basically have modules. They fit together like so. These are my jigs for when I get my doing my track at the end of the modules. But basically our modules they come apart like so and the whole fundamental design behind this is we have an end piece that is exactly 22 and 3 quarter inches long and from the top down to the top of our notch we have uh, one and a half inches our track is five and a half and eight and a half centered on the rails and I have these jigs here just so that I can get the ends of the rails soldered up right when I'm doing them. But basically with this notch like this and this end and the block and then on this end we have notches. We just put our modules together and then we latch them up. And nine times out of ten they just go right together without any issues. And we can have a a whole layout set up in almost no time at all. There we are. We're, whoops. Okay, so there we are there. And then we use suitcase latches on the sides. Now this one only has one because these are my jigs and I'm not running power through them. But normally we put two suitcase latches on. One here, one here. And we have run a power wire here power wire here, power wire here, power wire here and that's what runs to our tracks. So the blocks inside keep the up and down height the same and the in and out height or the in and out the same so that our tracks here always line up. And then our power is rooted through here because uh, these are zinc plated suitcase latches and they latch them together and hold them solid and, and we have power runs at the same time. We can set up a layout in very few minutes. As a matter of fact, the last day run we had, we used this particular layout right here and it has 22 straight modules and two large corners on it and three small corners. And we came up with a, a new design for our corners right here which basically this section right here takes place of a straight module an old small radius corner and another straight module and the reason we did this was the radiuses on this radii sorry on these on this small corner right here was 18 and 21 and anyone who runs model railroads knows that uh, when you run a radius is that small only four axle stuff works on it and we have one fella in the club he's got a, a big boy and it wouldn't run on it we have another guy who has a Selkirk and it wouldn't run on it so they're kind of frustrated with the with the layout design so then we came up like I said with these big corners and these big corners have a 51 and a 48 inch radius. They work really good for the roller stock. The really cool thing about this, de about this design is this layout here with the 22 straight modules and the two big radius corners, an inside corner, three small corners. Only took about half an hour to set up and even and that was with people coming in late and everything else. So that, that wasn't bad at all. So one of the guys in the club, he, he drew out the plans for it. And here they are here. I know they're kind of hard to see. And, but he did this. So I decided to transfer them to the floor right here. And from experience, I knew that our modules are 34 inches long and 24 and a quarter inches wide and basically I drew that out on the floor here and then our corner modules were 30 and 3 quarters kind of square 
with a little notch off the corner here and a little notch here but so overall replacing one corner module and a straight module I knew I had to go 64 and three quarter inches from here to there so I drew that square out on the floor like so and that is a 64 and three quarter inch square now I don't know how experienced some of you are with with getting things square but there's two ways of doing it one a really simple formula is you measure three feet here and then you measure four feet here and then measure five feet across and that makes your line square or if uh, you got enough room you can measure uh, six feet eight feet and then ten feet across the diagonal would do the same thing or you can measure from this corner to this corner and that corner to that corner and that measurement should be exactly the same and then if you do that then your template that have you that you have put down on the floor will be exactly the same so anyway then I just drew a diagonal line from from the outside corner here to the inside corner here and that way when I put in my radiuses this was uh, for my 51 and 40 48 inch radius block here it worked out with this line going across here that it was really easy to line up and I and I got it done that way now as you can see I even went ahead and drew my radius out on the floor here so that I could have a picture of it before I started so and this here is just basically we're trying to rec retrofit large radiuses into into uh, a, a small radius but we didn't want to change the design of the layout <coughs> excuse me uh, that much so this is what I come up with for our, our design idea and it works out this I'll show you when we get it done but this is basically one module here comes across here and then one module comes across here and these two modules replace three so that is the uh, idea behind this and it would work with Freemo or or the NMRA standards or, or whatever this one is being built to our particular design but you're not limited as long as you fit within the specs that they have you can come up with almost anything you want to so anyhow I will sign off for a minute here and I will get things laid out and I will kind of show you what's going on there all right you will see here where I have the whole corner nailed together this is basically one straight module and one old corner module and one straight module in in our club and now it is just two modules that take care of it and we like to use inch and a half foam on top so what I do is in in our case these side pieces have to be three and three sixteenths high so I make these uh, two and five sixteenths that leaves me an inch and a half here for uh, the one and a half inch foam I cut nice blocks out of two by for the corners and that helps uh, square it up with them putting it together and then in the other corners I like to use a piece cut on a 45 like so and that just squares everything up really nicely and uh, at the ends of them I try to keep the end in here just a little bit just in case this board here warps going down the road and you'll see there where I keep a little gap just 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 for the future warpage issue because warpage does happen so anyhow there she is nailed together and our next step will be to put on the foam okay um, after I uh, get the frame done then the next step is put in a couple pieces of foam the first thing I do is take it to the table saw and rip it down to size which I know because the inside of my module is 22 and 3 quarters I rip it slightly less and I make sure I also take off the the lip on the end before I before I rip both sides and uh, 
I also ripped this off as well and I just used my knife for that but after I get that all ripped off then I just take everything and flip it upside down and I mark it and then I cut it using my knife uh, trying to keep it as straight as possible so that it fits the best it can and then I uh, test fit it to make sure it all fits well my next step that I like to do is I like to use this polyurethane glue this one is Elmer's but I actually prefer uh, Gorilla Glue. I find it a little thicker and, and it stays in place a little bit better. But basically what you do is you just put it on. Like I say, this stuff's a little runny. So you got to be careful with it. I like Gorilla Glue. It's a little thicker. It stays in place a little bit better. But you basically you get all your surfaces done. Oops, sorry about that. Get all your surfaces done here. And then, after you've done that, you take and you wet it with water. This is what activates this glue, and it turns out into a yellow foam when you're done. Well, if I could get this thing spraying, we'd be doing okay. There we go. Like I say, just, just wet it down, all your surfaces. The water, the water acts as an activator, so and you get it wet, just like that. There we are. And after you get the pieces put in, you weight it down really good because that stuff tends to expand as it's curing. And I usually try to do a weight half on the edge and then half on the foam so that way it ends up nice and flush when she's done. Okay, now that the uh, glue has dried, and you'll see where it dries into kind of a, a yellow color there, it's time to draw in our track center line. The uh, straights here, I just draw on the end. Like I said before, they're five and a half and eight and a half from the uh, front edge. And for the radius, I just made up a stick and I drew a or made a hole here to set a nail in. And I got a nail on my block. And you can see now why I have a block. I have it three and 13 16 inches above the floor. And then down at the other end, I put in two marks, one is 48, one is 51, and I made this hole to hold the pencil, and now all I do is just run around and draw my radius line, and you'll see here where I drew the uh, 48 inch one already. Now on this particular size curve, I didn't worry too much about calculating in an easement because it's such a huge radius that that uh, it really doesn't matter. There we are. Our radius lines are now drawn in. And the nice thing about doing a module with the corner cut on a 45 is even on the radius it comes across the center part at almost 90 degrees so we don't have any issues with uh, derailments or anything like that on the corner so anyways I'll uh, go ahead and finish up here and then I will post another video here in the very near future about laying the cork and laying the track and and uh, how I solder up the ends on these thank you for watching bye